Today on The Passage, I want to show you how living a lot like this frying pan could actually help you to live the best life you possibly can for God. Stick with me. Hey folks, welcome back to The Passage today. My name is Jim Merle, and you're probably already wondering what in the world could living like a frying pan have to do with me living my life? And I actually think I've got biblical proof for this, so I hope you're willing to grab your Bibles, whether it's a leather-bound copy like I have, maybe a digital copy on a phone, a device, something like that, and look at the text we're about to look at. As a matter of fact, we're only going to be looking at one verse today, so it's easy to focus on that if you want to grab your Bibles. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 13. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 13. I'll be reading from the King James Translation. Here's what the Bible says. To the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Now, you may not see wording in there that would describe a frying pan necessarily, but I promise you near about the exact word for nonstick is actually there. And it happens to be the word King James speak unblameable. Again, it said here to us, to the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable. Blameable. What in the world does it mean to be unblameable? Well, again, literally, it means to be nonstick. It is the idea that if accusation is made against us as Christians, that those accusations, they don't stick. We cannot be blamed for something that we actually did not do, obviously, because we did not do them. Now, I don't know exactly how this draws out. Let's just imagine for just a moment that someone comes to me and they say, Hey, Jim, I just want to talk to you for a moment. I want to let you know that I know for a fact that you are a drunkard and an alcoholic and an abuser. And I say, Whoa, whoa, how in the world would you get that idea? And they say, Well, just, just uh, last Saturday night, I happened to be driving down the highway. I looked over there at the local bar and I saw you in the parking lot like you had just come out of the door. And I knew by that that you must be an alcoholic you must be a drunkard and you must be a bar hopper a party man uh, all these other things they could make accusation against well if if i could honestly look them in the eyes and say you know what you may have seen me there but i'm not blamed for that it's it's not an accusation that's going to stick that would be a good thing, particularly if it were the truth, if it were the fact that I never, and I haven't, I've never taken a drink in my life, not one drop of alcohol, and and so you couldn't accuse me of that. Now, there's a lot of things you might accuse me of that may be accurate, that may stick, but in that case, I'm absolutely non-stick. I'm unblameable. Now, how in the world would that be possible? How can we keep ourselves unblameable in a world that is filled by those who want to make accusation, in a world that, for the most part, is backed by the accuser of the brethren, Satan himself? Well, I think the verse reveals a little bit to us about how that is possible if we just read it again a little bit more clearly. Again, reading the verse, verse 13, 1 Thessalonians 3, it said, To the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable, in holiness before God, even our Father. Now, again, there's some clues right here as to how I can remain, and you as well could remain unblameable in light of any accusation. And the first principle here is that we become unblameable because we remain holy. We are in, quote, holiness. That is, being holy has overtaken our lives. Now, to understand what that really means, being holy doesn't mean an absolute saint. Being holy doesn't mean a, someone who has never sinned, that's never made a mistake, that's never fallen short or stumbled in his life. That's not what being holy is. As a matter of fact, the word holy and holiness here literally means to be set apart to put distance between our lives and the way that we live those lives and the way that the world lives it li its life. It is to be set apart from the world, and in essence, to be set apart from the world is to be set closer to God. So separating ourselves or putting that wall of separation between us and the world is what can allow us to be 
unblameable. Now, to illustrate that a little bit farther, this using the accusation that I'm a drunkard and an alcoholic and a bar hopper. Imagine that that person drove down the road and they saw me in front of that bar. Well, I don't think they should draw those kind of conclusions, but, you know, sometimes people do. But what if it were the case that that was not even true that I was there? What if it were the case that what had actually happened that night is that I was driving down the road and I noticed my tire getting low and even I noticed my tire blowing out of being flat and I looked there to the right of the side of the road where it would be easy to pull off and all I saw was a bar. And now imagine if I thought to myself, you know what, I'm not going to allow myself to be blamed or, or have an accusation to stick to me by being seen in this bar parking lot. So I chose not to pull off there in spite of the fact it was going to continue to cause damage to my tire, potentially the wheel. And I drove on another few hundred feet and pulled into the next parking lot there on the right. Now, what I have done is I have not only remained unblameable, and that accusation is nonstick, but I have actually driven on to the point that I have become more holy. Now, I don't mean holy in the literal spiritual sense. I mean holy as in describing it as a physical attribute. That is, I've taken myself farther away from that worldly place and those worldly things and those worldly uh, habits and, and the participation of it in that bar like exist inside of bars and i've taken myself farther from that and i don't think this is the perfect illustration don't get me wrong but i think it is an illustration that can help us to be reminded that in everything in life if we are going to at least try to be unblameable try to be non-stick like a frying pan we're going to have to get farther and farther away from the world and be set apart from the world so that there's really no way anyone could make even a relatively honest accusation, even a mistaken accusation against us. But I don't think that is the end all of how this is possible. I don't think it's really just putting physical distance every time between us and potential for sin or a tension, but the potential for being tempted to sin. I think it comes down to more than that. And it's really a part of the verse I skipped over intentionally. So let's read it again. First Thessalonians three and verse 13. Here's what the scriptures actually say to the end that he, that is God, may establish you in your hearts unblameable in holiness before God the Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what the verse actually said is that the way that we can be unblameable because we are holy, because we are set apart, is actually only possible by the word and the establishment that God gives us through his word. That is, within myself, within myself alone, by myself, without access and without the accompaniment of God, I can't be unblameable. I can't be holy. I can't be anything really that would be closely relatable to what Christ is like. So here's what we have to do every day in our lives. I've got to continue in my life to constantly open my heart, open my mind to God. Allow me through my study and examination of God's Word to help me to be that person that remains holy, set apart from the world, but yet set toward God, so that in judgment I may stand unblameable. appreciate you joining me today. Be faithful, my friends.